I've scaled not one, but two, six and seven figure businesses in less than three years in a pandemic. And one of the key factors has been outsourcing. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to outsource your way to a million pound business. I'm Simon, entrepreneur and property investor. And three years ago, I decided I needed to make a change. I decided I was just gonna start my own thing and it was gonna be in business and more specifically, property investment stroke property management. And yeah, here we are three years later, it's been crazy just to scale these two businesses from zero to one is in the hundreds of thousands of pounds of annual revenue and the other is over a million pound of annual revenue now. And one of the keys to that has been through outsourcing and leveraging. So I thought it might be of value for me to do a video dedicated to the five key lessons I've learned about how to outsource as a small startup business. So first things first, when you start from zero to 100,000 pound annual revenue, it's mainly going to be about you. You're gonna be doing front office, back office, account, sales, marketing, you name it. And that's okay. But when you get to around 100,000, which is gonna be work hard, work smart, hustle hard, all them 5 a.m. starts, you then are gonna need very different things in place to be able to go from 100,000 to a million pounds worth of revenue. And there's five key things that I've learned that I think I wanna share with you that would be super helpful. Number one is outsourcing low value tasks. So this means tasks that you could easily train somebody else to do. Some of them won't even need training, <laughs> although they will need direction, but I'll come to that later. Outsource as quick as possible. So in my business, that was sort of more errands like, you know, going to Ikea, um, you know, going to supermarkets to try and get properties renovated, letting um, refurb teams into the property, collecting deliveries, just sort of standard mundane tasks that don't require me to do them, outsource them and outsource them quickly. The psychology behind that is that if it costs you 10 pounds an hour for somebody to go to Ikea, pick up a bunch of stuff that you've set out and bring it back, for example, that could be three hours, it could cost you 30 pounds. And if I manage to get a new deal in those three hours, that could generate me 50, 100,000 pounds. So it's far better for me to focus on the income generating task and outsource those lower skilled tasks. Number two is to outsource things that people can do better than you. In other words, you know, I'm not great at sort of digital media, websites, design, logos, etc. I'm not that good at admin. So therefore outsource that because that's actually gonna benefit your business. I think at the beginning, we all have a tendency to think that nobody is gonna, nobody's gonna love our business like us and nobody's gonna do it quite as good as us. But after a little while, you realize that is dumb. <laughs> it's just not true. Because if you hire talent, if you find talent to help you, they will actually do things better, which will free up your time, and it will also increase the standard of your business. So I've outsourced marketing, digital marketing, all design, websites, accounting, um, and admin, back-end stuff, tons of stuff that people were just better at than me. Really, really great investment. Number three is when you do outsource, you need to outsource right because it doesn't matter how good somebody is, how talented they are, or how simple the task is, people will mess it up. People will get confused, there'll be a breakdown in communication, and people won't have the structure and boundaries and guidance for you to get the best out of them. So what I really recommend is in the zero to 100,000 pound revenue phase, you start making notes and writing manuals for the way that you like things to be done and for the lessons you've learned so that when it comes time for you to outsource a task, you can say, right, and here's a manual, here's a checklist of how I like to do it, here's some guide videos of how I recommend doing it, this is the deadline, this is the pay, this is what to do if you're struggling, this is what to do if things go wrong, and then you outsource it 
because if you don't do that, you will have a nightmare. And I remember at the beginning trying to hire and outsource and stuff and my because I didn't have a grip of things myself, it just became hectic and I lost good people because I'd not handed out the tasks and the jobs in the right way. So when you do outsource, outsource right, make sure there's a very clear um, list of things that they need to do and what you expect of them and then they've got half a chance of actually following through. Number four is the speed in which you do outsource. Outsource too soon and things could go pear shape and you've not got the capital to fund it. Outsource too late and you're gonna be pulling your hair out and ruining your marriage. <laughs> so you need to make sure that you outsource at the right time, not too soon, not too late. And how do you know that? Well. I guess I would rather outsource slightly sooner rather than later because you're gonna train yourself and the business to let go to grow, okay? But a great tip here is outsource really small tasks initially and when somebody has them on board, outsource further. And by the way, for clarification, outsourcing could mean that an external person does it or it could mean that you hire somebody in and outsource tasks, okay? It, either is essentially the same in terms of what we're discussing here. You just wanna offload some of your workload so that you can work on other tasks. And number five is interesting. This means when you do outsource, don't get lazy. <laughs> so I speak to so many people and they start to outsource tasks. You know, they're working 60 hour weeks, they outsource tasks and then they drop down to 30 when ideally what you wanna do is you probably wanna still be at 45, 50, 60 in scale mode, but instead of you doing the low generating tasks, the low income generating tasks, you start focus on the stuff that's gonna add value to that top end, because that's how you're gonna get from 100,000 to a million. So to summarize, zero to 100,000 was mainly me, just grafting, grafting and grafting. Then 100 to a million, um, that was all about bringing other people on, reinvesting the profits, not changing my lifestyle, you know, not getting crazy, not buying cars and getting flashy and thinking I'm the man, but reinvesting that money into a team of people who are skilled and could do things better than me, can remove the lower end tasks for me, making sure that I'm giving it them in the right way, okay? And then, you know, not rushing, but doing it at a fast enough speed to push the growth. And that's how we've done it. And one bonus tip here before I sign out. Maybe you're not ready to hire somebody or fully outsource something. A great solution could be a personal assistant. So somebody that can work alongside of you and collaborate with tasks. So you're still actively involved in something, but you can still offload some of the more mundane elements and then get feedback and then you work together to then get it away. So it should take a lot less of your time. So that's something you would definitely want to look into doing once you hit that 100,000 pound. If you found that useful, please do comment below, subscribe to the channel. You'll see there's tons of property investment stuff on here, but I'm keen to do more business stuff. If you find that of value, let me know. And I'll see you in the next video.